All right, guys. So in this video, we're going to be checking out a transition metals past paper question. All right, just two questions here from paper one, June 2017. I'll link it in the description down below, along with the mark scheme and examiner's report. But as always, I can't show the actual paper on the screen because of AQA's copyright. So a lot of people struggle with this topic, transition metals, but it's honestly not that hard. It's mainly memory, to be honest. So let's jump into the question and see what's going on here. So ethane dioate ions, right, let's highlight that, it's really important. They undergo a ligand substitution reaction when interacting with aqueous iron three plus ions. We need to write an equation for the described reaction and we have to propose a reason for the enthalpy change of the reaction being close to zero. So interestingly, AQA has actually thrown in some thermodynamics here with this enthalpy change. And it's not that hard of a question if we just take a deep breath and break it down using logic and memory, okay? So first thing I'm gonna do then is just write down this equation for the ethane dioate ions being involved in the ligand substitution reaction. And this is honestly, I'd recommend just using flashcards, guys, to memorize these equations. This is straight out of the spec. So let's start off with our aqueous ion three ions. Pause the video for a second and think, do you remember what this complex is written as? So as always, you want to show square brackets to denote that it's a complex. Next up, you're always going to show what your central metal ion is. In this case, it's ion three plus, okay? And then you want to show what the ligands are in rounded brackets. So in this case, it's an aqueous complex. So it's always gonna be surrounded by water, okay? And there's six of these guys, okay? And this is because it's an octahedral complex. And then what you wanna to do to finish the complex, you just put another square bracket, okay? And there's one thing missing here, and that's the charge. What is the charge on this iron? It's three plus. What is the charge on a water ligand? It's zero, okay? So three plus times six lots of zero is still three plus. So nothing has changed here. Okay, next thing we're adding is our ethane dioate ions. So ultimately here, we're going from an octahedral complex with six ligands to something, okay? We're adding ethane dioate ions. These are all bidentate, okay? This means that for every ligand, every ethane dioate ions, we get two dative or coordinate bonds forming. So what this means then is if we get an, a ligand substitution reaction, this is a complete ligand substitution reaction. So all of these water molecules are kicked off, replaced or substituted by the ethane dioate ions and we're replacing all of the coordinate bonds with new ones. So then, we're gonna have our ethane dioate ions. Do you remember what this is written as? This is another thing you really need to remember. So C2O4 two minus. This is the ethane dioate ion, okay? It's a ligand, not a complex. We don't need to put square brackets around it. As I mentioned before, because each of these ions, each of these ligands forms two coordinate bonds, we don't need six, okay? We don't need six of these guys to completely substitute. We only need three. So that would be our mole coefficient here, three of these guys, okay? So what does that become then? It's going to become, as I said, square bracket to denote a complex, Fe, our central metal ion still, that hasn't changed. And then we're gonna have our ethane dioate ions. So C2O4, rounded bracket, we don't need to show the charge inside the complex. You want to show the charge outside of the square brackets like we have here, okay? So I'm gonna show three here. So we've got three ethane dioates, and then we have to change the charge. So what's happened here then? We've got one lot of three plus. Okay, let's bracket that up. And we're adding in three lots of two minus. Okay, so which is six minus. So three plus, Minus six equals minus three. So that is overall charge for this complex right here. Let's write that up. So three minus, and then we've kicked all of the water molecules off through the complete ligand substitution. So we have to just show the water molecules in the equation. All right, so that's the equation done. That's the first mark and some theory behind that. Really try and remember the different bidentate ligands you need to know. 
and you should be fine. Now, getting onto the thermodynamics. Why is the enthalpy change of this reaction close to zero, okay? So what I'm actually going to do quickly is I'm gonna draw out one of these coordinate bonds and we have to think to ourselves what is actually going on in this reaction. So if we have our central metal ion here, let's actually change to a nice blue. So we've got our central metal ion, as I said, and I'm gonna focus in on only one of these states of covalent bonds, even though there's six here and six here, let's just focus on one, okay? So we're gonna have the O of the water, and this is bonded to two hydrogens, okay? So as I said, this is one of the data covalent bonds, and there's gonna be six of these guys surrounding this central metal, okay? Now, this is our starting complex right here. Let's draw the bond in our ethane diuate complex over here. So let's change it up to a green. So we're gonna have our iron here, and then I'm gonna draw, I'm not gonna draw the position of the bond, so whether they're going away from us or coming towards us, we'll save that for this question 11.3, but for now, let's just draw one of the oxygens. So we have oxygen here, and this is going to go off into the remainder of our ethane dioate ion. Okay, so we're gonna have a C here, O here, O here. Okay, and then we've got the rest of the molecule. I'll draw it out just so you guys are aware but we'll do that in the next question anyway, so it's all good. Now, I'm actually gonna take a step back here and rub this out. As I said, I only want to focus on one of the coordinate bonds. So the reason that the enthalpy change of the reaction is close to zero is because this dative covalent bond here between the Fe and the O is exactly the same as this one right here in the ethane dioate complex. Okay, and that is the theory behind this question. That's the reason that the enthalpy change is pretty much zero because we're breaking this bond and we're reforming this bond. And the energy required to do that is basically gonna be the same because it's an iron datively bonded to an oxygen. Okay, or coordinately bonded, however you wanna to refer to it as. And there's six of these guys being broken and reformed. So that's what I'm gonna write in the question and that is what you'll see in the mark scheme. So let's write that out then. So there are six coordinate FeO bonds broken and reformed or remade or made in the ligand substitution. Okay, the wording here isn't too important. You don't have to get it exact. You just have to say how many bonds there are because if there were six bonds broken here and only four reformed or something like that, the enthalpy is going to be different because there's a different number of bonds. So there's six bonds being broken and reformed or made or remade. And that's literally what you need to do for the one mark. Okay, for the second mark of this question. So first mark right here, second mark right there. Hopefully that was helpful, bit of theory bit of thermodynamics, let's move on to 11.3. So we need to draw the displayed formula of the iron complex produced in the reaction in the above question. And we need to say, what is the bond angle in this right here? Okay, and what type of isomerism is shown by the iron complex? Okay, so we've got three stages to this question. We need to draw the displayed formula. Let's highlight that as well. Displayed formula, what does that mean? What is a displayed formula? All this means is that we need to display, it's in the word, all of the bonds, okay? Every single bond, you need to display it, okay? Bond angle and isomerism, we'll get to that in a second. Let's start off by drawing the complex. So I sort of started by doing it here, but you, let's also show the position of the bonds, okay? Some bonds are going to be coming towards us, signified by a wedge, and then some away from us, signified with a dashed line. Okay, so let's start with our central metal as always, and I'm gonna draw six bonds around this. Let's actually not do six. I like to do six, but let me just break it down step by step so you guys can see what's going on. So as I said, the dashed line signifies a bond going away from us. This is a 3D molecule. So we're gonna have our ethane dioate. So it's C2O42 minus, right? These two oxygens are both bonded onto a carbon. 
Let's move this down a bit actually, because we're going to run out of space. So these carbons are double bonded onto an oxygen. So there we have it. We have our C2O4 2 minus. Okay. Now, because there's three of these molecules and each have, has two coordinate bonds, we can do the exact same thing and just repeat it three times. Okay. So I'm going to draw another one right here. And then instead of drawing a dash, I'm going to draw a wedge. And that's because it's coming towards us this time. All right. I can't be bothered to fill that in, but you get the idea. So again, we're going to have an oxygen here, oxygen here, bonded to two carbons. And this is going to have an oxygen and another double bonded oxygen. I kind of run out of space, so it's a bit, it's a bit wonky, but you get the idea. This ligand is going to have another dash bonded onto it and another wedge. Okay. Color that in. Okay. Exact same thing, guys. It's not too complicated. Get your flashcards out. Practice drawing out these molecules and you'll be completely fine. Right, so we've drawn the complex here. There's one thing missing, okay? As always, denote that it's a complex with the square brackets. And we have to fulfill what the charge is. The formal charge on this complex is three minus. Now, classic AQA in their additional column in the mark scheme, <laughs> surprise, surprise, it says, ignore absence of square brackets and ignore all charges even if wrong. Now, I assume that this is because it only asks you to draw the displayed formula and it doesn't really care about the charges and the brackets, but please guys, please add these in because it's really important and that's how we learn it. So I'm not too sure why AQA has ignored it here, but just try and remember it as best you can for your exams, okay? So we've done the first mark. What is the bond angle? Now, this is real easy, guys. Don't get too confused and think this is completely different to year one shapes and bonding, all right? What is this? What is the shape of this complex right here? It's, as I mentioned earlier, it's an octahedral. We're going from an octahedral aqueous water complex to an octahedral bidentate ethane dioate complex, okay? They're both octahedral. So if you go back, cast your mind back to year one shapes and bonding, what is the bonding angle in an octahedral shape? you remember? So it's going to be 90 degrees. Okay, so in between each of these bonds, it's going to be 90 degrees. All right, boom, done. Don't draw it in like this, just specify that bond angle equals 90 degrees. Okay, they haven't asked for the shape here, but it's always useful to know. Okay, so final mark in this question then, isomerism. So really just try and remember this, it's quite easy. Just remember there's only two types of isomerism present in the transition metal topic. Do you remember what they are? So first off is cis trans isomerism, very similar to EZ. It's just that in the transition metal topic, they refer to it as cis trans instead. And the other one is optical, okay? Just like you have in organics, you have optical isomerism. Okay, these isomers are going to be non superimposable images of one another. So I won't go into the theory behind these two isomers right here, but what you need to know is that cis trans isomers can exist in tetrahedral, tetrahedral, and octahedral complexes, and optical isomerism can exist in octahedral when three bidentate ligands are bonded. So even though I've said here that cis trans can exist in octahedral, this is going to be monodentate, for example, with our water molecule, right? Now, this would never be cis trans, and that's because all of the ligands are the same. Whereas if we chucked in like two chloride ions, there's going to be two ions that are the same, two ligands that are the same, and the the four remainder are different. So this has potential for EZ isomerism, whereas with this bidentate ligand right here, the only option we have is optical. Okay, so just try and remember that. Cis trans for tetrahedral and octahedral monodentate ligands and optical isomerism for bidentate octahedral complexes. Okay, so that's the basics, guys. Just really try and remember that on your flashcards, do some practice questions. If you want to check out a more detailed video, I've done one that covers complexes and transition metal isomers. 
in far more detail. So check that out if you want to learn some more. But for this question, that is honestly all you need to know. So before we finish the video, then let's read through the examiner's report and see where most students are going wrong. This is an incredibly important resource that you should be taking advantage of. So where did students go wrong for a question 11.2? They often failed to give a balanced equation. So that's really important. You want the charges across the reactants and products to be balanced and the amount of things to be balanced. All right, pretty simple stuff, but a lot of students didn't manage to get that. It says that charges on the complex were often incorrect and many did not give water as one of the products, okay? If we have a substitution reaction occurring, the initial ligand right here, the water or whatever it may be, that's bonded onto the complex, the metal ion, this has to be kicked off, so it has to be present on this side. So next part of the exam's report said, many students understood that the same number of bonds were broken and formed, but few could also state that they were the same type of bond, okay? So I didn't actually write that out in full because I specified what the bonds were. They were coordinate bonds in each instance. Question 11.3 then, it says that many students struggle to draw the displayed formula. Those who often got close omitted the carbon atoms from the ligand. So again, as I said, flashcards, guys. Flashcards are your best friend for this. Just literally write on the front, what is the structure of the ethane dioate complex? This can just be a capital M to signify a central transition metal. But make sure you understand what the structure of the bidentate ligands are. There's two bidentate ligands you need to know, ethane 1,2-diamine and this one right here, the ethane dioate. It's not too hard to remember both of them, so I'm sure you'll be fine if you do that. Do some flashcards, get it on the page, just keep practicing, make sure you're doing it right, and in no time you'll be completely fine. Displayed, remember, it just means show every single bond. So that's exactly what I did here. Next up, it says most students knew the bond angle, but some incorrectly gave 120 or 109.5 degrees. I suppose they were just guessing and just chucking a number on the page. But just remember, octahedral is going to be 90 degrees. Alternatively, let's actually look at this. Actually, something I didn't consider is even though this is an OFEO bond, this one right here is also an OFEO bond. OK, and this one would be two lots of 90, so 180. And those are both accepted. OK, now moving on to the optical isomerism point, it says the most common incorrect type of isomerism given was stereo isomerism or cis trans. OK, now both of these guys, cis trans and optical, these are both stereo isomerisms. OK, cis trans again only refers to tetrahedral and monodentate octahedral. OK, and this is going to be monodentate as well. So just try and remember those two key points, and I'm sure you'll be fine with all these types of questions. If you found the video helpful, if you want to see more question breakdowns like this, be sure to like the video, subscribe. It really helps the channel grow. Best of luck in your revision and upcoming exams, guys. Until next time, peace.